in the Gospel of St. Matthew, we read of Jesus performing a great miracle, the feeding of 5,000 men and many women and children. We can assume, I think, that it is unlikely they would have starved to death. They would have gone hungry for that night. But their lives weren't in danger, and yet, in his concern, in his care for the people there, Jesus performs this great miracle, takes a few loaves and fishes and feeds them. And the miracle is a sign of God's care and his blessing that is beyond expectation, beyond need. There are 12 baskets of pieces of bread left over. A great abundance of God's blessing and his love for man. There is throughout history, even beyond Christ's incarnation, a history throughout the life of the church, a history of miracles where God has intervened, where people have been healed. God has intervened to rescue people. And all of these miraculous events are signs of God's care and involvement in our lives. But there are times when we or those we love are in great danger, perhaps their lives are threatened, and we cry out to God. We pray and we don't perceive a miracle. And when no miracle appears to happen, we can be tempted to imagine that God's care has gone, that we're beyond God's care. The great error here, of course, is that we are judging God. We are judging the actions of God. We are judging God by man's standards, by man's justice, and not by the justice and wisdom of God. God's wisdom is not man's wisdom. It is very difficult to move beyond our own judgment of how we perceive God should behave and how we believe God should be intervening. It's very hard for us to truly understand how far we have fallen short, even of the, the spiritual giants of the past, the saints of the church, those in the apostolic times. Our minds are so corrupted. We have fallen so far even in the past few hundred years, we can see such a difference in ourselves and humanity at large from mankind in the past. And it's very difficult for us to recognize just how much we are truly judging by the world's standards, judging what occurs in the world, but also judging each other and even judging God. But God's wisdom is not our wisdom. And when these things occur, when our struggles, our trials and temptations befall us, we must remember that we do not judge them as God judges them. Our Lord, when he teaches us to pray, says, lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one, from the evil one. In the West, that part of the Lord's prayer has been forgotten. We are crying out to God to lead us from temptation and the evil one. And whatever it takes in God's care, his providence, to lead us from Satan is right. And we must trust in his judgment. There's a story in the lives of the Desert Fathers which is extremely difficult, I know, for many people to hear. The story goes that a monk was living with his elder in a cave out in the desert. And the elder said to the monk, go back to town, sell the crafts and the handiwork that we've made, go sell it, buy the provisions, bring it back to me. So in obedience, the monk goes out, sets off for town, and as he arrives, he sees a great procession with horses and musicians and a great crowd. And curious to know, one important person has died. He goes up to one of the crowd and says, excuse me, who is this funeral for? And the onlooker says to him, this funeral is for a harlot, a prostitute who lived in the town. The monk is confused. He watches the procession go by. And after a while, he returns to share what he's experienced with his elder. But as he approaches the cave of his elder, he hears the roar and the terrible screams and it 
he runs to the cave and sees a lion devouring his holy elder and his mind is confused and in his confusion he decides to leave the monastic life he says where is God's care in this look what I've seen in town look now at this this ending of my holy elder and on his way back into town as he decides to leave the wilderness an angel appears to him an angel who says to him where are you going what are you doing why are you turning your back on the angelic life and the monk explains to him what he has seen and his own feelings and the angel says to him the harlot you saw being taken off for burial her life was so filled with sin and yet at one point in life she did perform a few good deeds and God has given her her reward in this world so that she will go to judgment with nothing nothing to claim from God and your holy elder the angel said to him though he was truly holy though he was tru truly filled with the Holy Spirit and had attained great purification again in his early life he had committed a few sins and through his suffering God has forgiven him even those few sins washed them away from him cleansed them so that as he comes to judgment he has paid the price himself and as the young monk heard this he realized how false his own judgment was of the things and the way of things in this world and he returned to the cave now there will be Protestants who immediately respond as they hear their story and say, ah, oh, but God has paid the price ultimately through his son. This misunderstanding of the great price that Christ paid. Through his shedding of his blood, of course, Christ is the only means of salvation. We cannot attain anything without Christ. But Christ calls us to carry our cross in this life, to to walk the way of Calvary not for its own sake every command every instruction from Christ is for our salvation and if we simply falsely misunderstand the death of our Lord then we throw away our opportunity of salvation we must not judge God and the actions of God and the things of this world through earthly man wisdom. We must learn to accept the things of this world as God's will. And all our sufferings, all our struggles, we must accept them as God's will for us. And not looking at other people and judging other people, but when we look at ourselves and we see anger, we see frustration and fear about the way things happen in our lives and in the world around us. We must take them as a sign that our hearts are not truly trusting God. That we don't truly trust and have faith in the providence of God. We don't yet fully believe that our lives are completely and utterly in the hands of God. We may perceive chaos at times. But our lives are utterly in the hands of God. Every moment, every person that we encounter, everything that we hear and see, God permits. Our lives are utterly in the providence of God. So let us see our anger and our lack of faith and our lack of trust as something we must repent of. That we may learn to trust God. Let us think of the martyrs. The martyrs who, in the arena, when they were being beheaded, when they were being cut, when they were being thrown to wild animals. Their faces were so filled with joy that the crowds were astonished. It was a great witness to all that witnessed their, their martyrdom in the arena. The joy that they entered into that persecution, suffering and death. Not because they were in any way suicidal, but because they had such trust and faith in God, their joy continued despite the sufferings that they faced. And through their martyrdom, they earned their holy crowns. They entered eternity in joy. 
they were received by God and his holy angels into an eternal kingdom. We can only attain peace in this world if we let go of our judgment, of our demand of how we think the world should be and how we think our lives should be. When we look at people who live such terrible sinful lives and their lives are filled with earthly riches, great houses and palaces and huge amounts of money and status and the world applauds them. Let us recall the story from the lives of the Desert Fathers of that harlot and her great funeral procession. And when we see those who struggle and attempt to live for God, treated so poorly and persecuted by the world, let us remember that holy elder who died in the jaws of a wild beast. And when we can see the world this way and begin to see our own sufferings and our own struggles in this way and accept absolutely entirely that we are in God's hands, we are in God's love and his providence is completely over us. Only then can we begin to taste and experience the peace of heart that Christ offers us.